Hello everybody and welcome back. Today I thought we would make a cute uh, birdhouse, bird feeder, and um, I know that in a lot of areas we're not supposed to be feeding the birds right now, but we can get it made and that way when we can feed the birds it'll be all ready to go ahead and put outside. So I was going to start with one of these wooden rounds which I typed wooden round into Google and these popped up. I bought a 12 pack of them online and so you can buy them at the craft stores. Um, Michael's, Joanne Fabrics, I think Joanne Fabrics has them, but for sure Michael's and Hobby Lobby. And um, so you don't have to have a round piece. You can have any, any shape you want because we're going to cut it. So I also bought this tea kettle. It has no top. And I bought it at um, the Goodwill and it was only $1.99. And so I was going to use that. I'm going to pull the $1.99 off the back of it. Okay, so what we're going to do is take it and turn it upside down on this little wooden round. And then I have a pencil. I'm going to draw around the edge of our top of our tea kettle. We're going to draw that circle because then we will know what size we want to cut. We want to cut a circle to close up most of our little tea kettle. Okay. So then I don't know how many of you already have a scroll saw at home. You can either buy, you can measure this and buy your round that size or you can go ahead and cut it yourself. I'm going to go ahead and cut it on my scroll saw and then I'll be back. I'm going to also take and cut another little hole. I'm trying to decide what size I want. I meant to bring um, a little. I think if you go ahead and take a cap to like a vitamin bottle or something, you can get another little circle. I'm going to go ahead and try to be unique. And since I forgot to bring that out, I'll go ahead and just try something else. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and go cut this out and show you what a scroll saw looks like. So this here, the big one, is called a band saw, and this one next to it is a scroll saw, and that's what I'm going to be using to cut this out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You want to always make sure that you're wearing goggles when you do a project like this. All right. Always keep your fingers away from the blade, obviously. And you're going to do your best to go along your little line that you just drew. Okay, so this is what I ended up with. Okay, so we're ready to move on. So we're going to go ahead and take a pair of scissors and we're going to cut a piece of this sandpaper. It's 150 grid. You don't really need 150 grid, just whatever you have laying around the house will do, especially if you have that thin of a piece of wood as what we just cut. So what we're going to do is just sand all around it. And this is just so that the birds don't end up getting splinters on them is the reason we do this. I'm going to go around every edge and just sand it real quick. And we are going to paint this piece with Rust-Oleum so that it is good in the weather. In fact, we're going to use the same color Rust-Oleum as we used on our chair for our last um, project and the reason is because it matches all this stuff too and it will match my chair in the backyard so I thought that would be cute always hang on to the stuff that you buy because you will use it again especially if you're a crafty person 
So my circle, I didn't make it very perfect. You can take like a top uh, cap to like a vitamin bottle or something like that and set it on top. Like, or we could have used the bottom of this, but I thought that was a little too big. I'm hoping this isn't too small. I think that's usually about how it is. So the next thing I did was I bought a very long poplar board. This is 12 feet long. And the reason I bought it so long is because I have dogs. And I'm not going to be attaching this in a tree because I only have one really big tree. And I want to put it up high so the dogs can't get to it. So, so I needed a big, long board. So I'm going to unwrap this. It's called the poplar board, and I got it at Menard's. There we go. Okay, so now what we're going to do is go ahead and paint our circle. And we're going to paint our board. And I'm going to paint them both yellow because I have a yellow cup, which I also got from the Goodwill. And it was 50 cents. Set that to the side. Okay, so I painted the boards with rust-oleum because it'll do better in the weather. It'll help to protect the wood. So now while that's drying, we're going to go ahead and take this little pot and we're going to drill a hole in the back of it because we want to be able to put it on our board. This is going to be our birdhouse. So I have my husband's drill. I'm going to change it out to a different bit which I put on here somewhere. I'm going to drill it, put it to a drill bit instead of a screwdriver bit. And then I'm going to tighten it in there. And then you have to make sure it's on the correct setting. And so there's a setting here that shows, it's like a, almost looks like a screw, but it's so that you can drill on metal. So that's what we're going to do. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to turn it over this way, and I'm going to drill, drill a hole in the back of it. But I'm going to wear my safety glasses. Always make sure to put on your safety glasses because if a piece of metal flies, you don't want it in your eye. So remember, these aren't for beauty. <laughs> They're definitely for safety. Okie doke. i got to tighten them up on me. All right. And I'm going to, and so that I don't, well, yeah, I don't think I can drill a hole in this. I'll go ahead and try to do it on the table. I realize I have multiple things on this table today, but all right. So let's see how that goes. Okay, so there we go. As you can see, we drilled a hole through it. Okay. All right, we're going to start a hole right about here. Just get it started. Take this. Okay, so now we're going to change out our drill bit. And we're going to put the screwdriver in. Okay. And now we're going to line the screw up. Put that hole. All right. So I actually had to switch it to a 10. I ended up putting it on a 10. And it's, it is screwed on there real good now. Okay. So now that that's done, Okay, so these beads are from Hobby Lobby. They were $9.99, but they were on sale for 30% off. If 
and these little white beads I already had, I'm going to take some fishing line, which I got years ago at um, Kmart, and I'm going to go ahead and put fishing line through one of these beads. And then I'm going to tie it into a knot to hold the bead on in place. In fact, I might tie it like three or four times. Because fishing line sometimes wants to come untied. So we'll just tie it a couple times. And then I'm going to cut off the really long part and just leave a little short one on there. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and pick out a small one of these, but one that's big enough that it won't fit through this hole right here. And we're going to put that on with the bead. And I'm going to cut this off with about two feet, I'd say. And go ahead and put, these are called diamond bead box. And it looks like it says there's 39 pieces in there. And so here's what we have so far. I just put that on after the bead. And the reason I did that is because now I'm going to take the string and I'm going to feed it through the spout. Okay. And what that does is it holds it in there. So now the spout, I can add stuff to this. So now I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of these. I think I'm going to start with a little one. And I also think I'm going to take a little hot glue and hot glue it to the top here. But I'm also going to add a little E6000 to that also. Because when the hot glue gets hot, the bead will just fall off. So what we're doing with the hot glue is holding the bead in place until the E6000 um, dries. Okay, so this is what we have. Can you see that on there? Okay, so now from there, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more beads in whatever order I want them. They're all different. It looks like it's kind of two sizes, this kind of small size and this big size. And so I think I'm going to start with a couple small ones. I'm just going to play around with it to where I think it looks cute. So what I'm going to do is just put little globs of glue in between them to hold them in place with where I want them. I'm just putting it on the fishing line and then I'm putting it a little bit on a bead also and I'm going to do it again. Push that one up and then just kind of hold them until that dries a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the E6000 again because like I said, the glue, the hot glue, will get hot and it will just, the beads will just fall down lower, a different order. But the E6000 should dry and it won't do that. Okay, so now the big one. Okay, well that's kind of drying. I'm going to go ahead and grab another bead and I'm going to put it at the end. That's just to help hold that big drip on at the end. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the glue at the very end here. 
And then I'm going to cut that off and let it dry. Okay, now we're going to go back to working on this part. So now we're going to take our hot glue gun and the spots that we didn't get with the E6000, we're going to get with the hot glue. And I think I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit E6000 back on there. Okay, so now from Goodwill, I bought this little decorative thing, and it was $4. I'm going to go ahead and pull the sticker off. And I'm going to attach it right underneath here. Okay, so now I'm going to take the E6000 and go all around this plate, and I'm going to stick this plate on here. I'm also going to hot glue it to hold it in place. So then I'm going to go ahead and let this sit and dry for a little bit, and then we'll come back. Okay, so what I did was I waited until the plate was dry, and then I took my cup, and I used the E6000, and I glued my cup also onto the plate. So now we're ready to put our birdhouse into the ground. So I'm going to get up on the ladder and hammer it into the ground. Now, I already made about a foot deep hole in the ground. And I'm going to go ahead and hammer it in. Now, we did take off about two feet off of this board because I tried to get on the ladder and hammer it in, and it was so tall that I couldn't reach the top of it. So we had to take some off. It'll still be tall enough where my dogs can't get to it. That's the thing that I was worried about. So, all right, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's hammer it into the ground. I also put a bunch of loose dirt in the ground. All right, so I'm going to grab my hammer and just go up there and hammer it on in. And then I'm going to step on the loose dirt and make it uh, tight and firm so that it won't fall over. Now, if you wanted to really, really, really be secure, you could secure it to your fence. But because mine is the plastic fence, I didn't want to mess up the fence, and so I didn't do that. Um, I'm going to have my husband probably take a sledgehammer and hit it a little more into the ground to make it even more secure. So make sure that it's in the ground enough that you know it can't tip over. And I mean, yeah, because you don't want there to be babies in the, in the house and then it to tip over. So you want to make sure it's in there really well. So I'll probably hammer it in a little further than this but you get the idea of what to do so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did make sure to share it with your friends and um, please come and join me on youtube and i'd really appreciate if you'd give me some comments on youtube and subscribe and hit the like button and i'll see you guys next time bye